Good morning. Okay. Hi. So uh, my name is Smita. I'm uh, I'm from uh, Wipro. So I'm not sure how many of you understand what Wipro is. So I'll just tell you what Wipro is. Wipro is a, a service integrator. We work across different uh, verticals. We we work across uh, multiple customers across the geographies. And we have a plethora of skills that we have uh, people on. We have a skill base of uh, 170,000 people. So that, that's a lot, lot of us uh, there. And uh, we work on anything from uh, mainframes to OpenStack, from VLSI to AppDev to ERP to you, you name it, we have it. So that, that, that's, that's where we are. And uh, I'll, to just set a context of uh, why I'm here, so we uh, last two years back there was a strategy meet and we we kind of uh, understood that there are a lot of customers who are actually looking to migrate to complete open source uh, solutions. So they want to migrate their ent entire enterprise into an open source based uh, apps. So we are trying to see how how do we fit in there. So how do how do we pro with its uh, expertise in a lot of uh, customer uh, applications, a lot of uh, this thing. How, how how do we make a mark in the open source world? So that, that, that's where the entire journey began. And uh, we wanted to, so, so there, there was one thing that we wanted to do. We wanted to make sure our developers are savvy with what, what is happening in the open source world. And it required a different mindset for somebody to be in the open source world from a traditional uh, custom app or a, or a, or a uh, commercial product uh, mindset. Because here it was all about you getting to know you, you understanding what is, into, I mean, you, you need to get into the product to understand how it works and then you make changes to it and then, uh, then, then deliver it to the customer. It's not just about uh, using it. We, we, are, we are typically very good in using the uh, products that uh, commercial vendors give us. We know how to customize them. We know how to exactly make it work, all that we know. But then when it comes to making something, I mean, understanding the depth of a technology and then making it work, that's where we, we, we needed a change in mind, sh mind shift in our uh, in our developers uh, mind so why am i here we want uh, large enterprises like us who want to make such shifts to understand what we went through and then not do the same thing so in the true open source spirit we want to share what we learned uh, we want the community to understand that people like us big enterprises we are actually watching we we are keen to get into this world so there's a lot of support coming in and uh, th there are strengths that are there within us which you can leverage and then we want your help to make a mark to, to expand the community. And uh, we want our customers, uh, large enterprises to understand that yes, Wipro has its skin in the game. We want to, we, we are trying to change, we are, we are trying to adapt and then uh, get you the best when it comes to open source. So that's the context. So now, now let's see what, what, what is happening in my enterprise. So the, anybody who wants to learn something new, the learning path were like, quite tough. People didn't know where to go to learn uh, something that they have to learn. I mean, if, if they are working in a technology, they typically get stuck with that same technology till the end of their life. And they are like, you are an IBM person, you, you get to learn maybe a bit of IBM here and there, but then predominantly you're stuck to that same, uh, same, same kind of a product. And then uh, to understand that we, 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 had, we had technology silos within our organization. So for somebody to get trained on something totally different, which they, just their passion, it, it was very difficult. The crisscrossing within our organization to learn something new, it was, it was impossible for somebody to do it. And when we moved to open source, we knew that we can't force people to learn something. We can't force people to come to OpenStack. It has to be a passion which is driving them to come here because it, it's, not about, uh, it, it's not about you driving a herd into OpenStack. Open, open source and uh, that kind of uh, the mindset has to come from within. So we, we had to have a method by which we can actually uh, let people find what their passion is and then let them continue in that. So that was the change. It was really tough for us to do that with the current uh, way in which our uh, learning and development was functioning. And we had this cookie cutter. Everybody, if, if you want to learn something, this is the way you do. You, you attend a training, there are three days of training that you do, then there is two days of hands-on and you're done. You, you, you're, the, you're the boss, you, you know what to do. So traditionally what happens if you're, if you're actually training for a specific project makes sense. You attend this three days of training, two days of hands-on. From the next day you're actually in the project doing the technology. 
it it does work sometimes yes it it has worked and that's why we are we are such a big organization but then here the the problem that we were trying to address is slightly different we're trying to get people to learn something which they are not currently working on which is their passion we just want them to understand it and then if possible if they are interested we want to guide them to that uh, path so this required a lot of uh, continuous engagement with them not just those three days and two days of hands on and uh, it just didn't uh, help when you have uh, somebody coming from a totally different background maybe from a web app background coming to learn open stack and someone with an aws background coming to learn open stack the approach that we need to take is totally different it can't be a generic training that we can give to a lot of people right so so we had to make these uh, changes in our uh, in our approach and what were we looking for? We were looking for people with extreme skills. We wanted people to be heavy lifters who can actually do things which normally a developer in Wipro doesn't do. So we 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 were not into understanding. Okay, how 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 is this? We can, we can put solutions together using multiple technologies, but then going deep into one technology and seeing okay, no, how does it work? So that that's not we are used to. So we we were trying to get people to a totally different. Uh, Par paradigm altogether, so that required a lot of lot of changes from our side, and we were also looking at uh, full stack developers, the the buzzword uh, nowadays. So we want people to understand from web till deployment, from UX till uh, uh, performance, and all the litties associated with any application deployment. So we wanted uh, basically people who can juggle multiple things. And then that also required us to enable them to be familiarized with those things. So, so, so these these were the challenges that we had, and this is what we were trying to address. So, so that sets the context. Now, now comes this uh, team. So that, that that's where the story begins. So, two years back, we were a team of ten people who were interested with this uh, with this goal of uh, making ten thousand developers within Wipro, open source developers. So this was this was a big thing. So and 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 how did we go about? So that's what you're gonna hear. So we wanted to have people with high fungibility, adaptability. So we wanted people to learn one thing today, do something tomorrow, at the same time be on the lookout for another technology on the next day. So it, it could be it could be different technology domains, it could be different uh, languages. We wanted polyglots all over. So it, it it was so 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 the way the success would be defined is when we can actually create people who know how to learn. It's not about teaching them a technology; it's about teaching them how to learn a technology. So that that was one of the goals that uh, we had in mind when we embarked on this journey. So this we realized wouldn't come in with a traditional L and D kind of method where you have a central team which is actually trying to give training on technologies which you don't know. I mean, today, today you know, there is a there is a React JS that is coming in, and two days later, you realize there is another JavaScript framework which has come, which has got, I mean, you, you, you need to get your people skilled on that. So it makes it uh, really difficult for a central team to give this kind of a, a mindset change in the minds of uh, developers. So what we came up with is this something called a community-based uh, competency building. So we wanted to create a community within Wipro, which is, we, we call it inner sourcing community, because we are, we are still not there where we can open source all what we are doing. So we are trying to do something which is at least within Wipro, we would share what we have, what we, what we learned. So that's the, that's the kind of uh, approach that we wanted to do. So we, we wanted to create an inner sourcing community within Wipro, where uh, we would open up all open source technologies and uh, related uh, avenues where we, they can get uh, skilled on. And then we wanted people who are passionate about things, passionate about these technologies to come and start uh, exploring it. And we knew that there will be people who are actually very passionate about uh, skills, it's just that they, they didn't have uh, an avenue where they could learn it. So we wanted those experts to come from the, from, from the community. At the same time, we also wanted the, the new learners, I mean, who wanted to learn this technology to come in. So uh, well, what we were trying to do was just being, being a platform where these two people would come together and, be, and, and collaborate. And we wanted to see how this is going to work out. 
so that that's that's what we tried doing so this was this is two years back so we had everything set up we had a platform we had a drupal based uh, collaboration platform which we developed we had uh, gitlab at an enterprise level we connected these two systems so people could actually come and uh, start uh, learning together collaborate discuss and then also do projects together so we had uh, we had identified around uh, 10 to 11 technologies where we wanted to focus so we gave them uh, you 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 can come and choose it doesn't matter what your background is what your division is where you belong which uh, um, whether you are a senior developer junior developer architect manager doesn't matter you're free to choose what uh, technology is there you can you can come and choose and there were learning paths created where people could actually do either either choose from a, a self study based model or an online training or maybe even an instructor led training so we had all that set up and then we thought in a, in a month's time when we actually launched it, we had around 1,000 people who came and said, yes, we want to learn this. And then there are a lot of people who came and uh, self-declared they are, they are masters in the technology. And we thought, yes, we, we are done. What is there? I mean, we, we have a technology platform which enables uh, people to collaborate. We have people who have come across and then telling that, yes, we want to collaborate. 1,000 in a month, OK, so 10,000 is not far along. <laughs> so so we, 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 we are very good. And that's when we started realizing it just doesn't work that way. So we, we were trying to build things as we go. So it's not that we had uh, the technologies that we were exploring were like pretty, pretty new. We didn't have all the learning materials available. And uh, there's also, also the thing of how, how, do we, how do we give hands-on training to people? So we had to have some sample projects in the technologies that we had. And we had to also had some solutions so that people can actually move beyond the hello world and start doing things and then see some benefits associated with it. So we didn't have all these things planned and uh, ready. So we, we, we were trying to build it as we go. So it was, it was really difficult because somebody would come in and say, I want to start learning it. We, we didn't have everything that was required for them to start learning. So it, it was difficult. So we, th this, is, this is another cultural challenge that we faced, where uh, people were actually used to sitting down in a classroom, understanding how uh, so some, somebody would give them a ABCD of a technology and then teach them, yes, this is how it works, and this is how in this scenario you, had, uh, you, you can handle it and things like that. From that, we were actually letting them loose into a world where they had to figure out by themselves. So they had to learn, they had to explore, they had to do sample uh, assignments and then figure out how this technology works. And that just didn't go well with a lot of people because it, it was difficult. And people were actually looking for an easy way out in every method and then we, we, we see people dropping out of the community, not coming regularly, not coming for our meetups, not coming for evangelization sessions, it was becoming a challenge. And then the other thing was uh, being a, a large enterprise with a lot of uh, security. We never allowed anybody to install anything beyond what they wanted to do for their work. <laughs> so it was impossible to somebody to learn something new. It is, uh, they, they could at the best do it in a training environment where you have uh, uh, three days of training, you, you get an access to an environment where you are done with it. You don't have, even, even if you have a will to learn, you don't have an environment where you can actually try hands-on, that is becoming a challenge. And then how do we do, see all this is available, I mean for, a, for, a, for any other developer who is not within a, I mean like, like how you were asking in the previous session about a large enterprise, if you're not in a large enterprise, it, it, these are simple things that are there available. I mean you want to install something, you are in the open source world, you download, install and you're done. But then in the context of an enterprise where you have certain uh, security considerations, where you want uh, people to follow certain standards, it, 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 was, it was becoming impossible for us to give them that uh, uh, flexibility of installing what they wanted. So we were ag against this uh, concept of standardizing things. We didn't want to preach. We wanted to move away from the cookie cutter. But yes, there, there, there was no choice. We had to come to terms with things. 
that yes, there, there were some standardizations that were required. So what we tried was, in the technologies that we had shortlisted, we actually picked up, uh, a, a, we, we created a dev environment. So we said, okay, if, if you're, if you're going to do OpenStack, then these are the things that are required. And uh, we, we prepackaged that as an image, and then we made it available in our, in our infrastructure as a virtual box images. So you can actually download an image or, or a Docker image. So you can have that image, and then when only when you are actually trying to do a hands-on on that, you bring up that image, and then your uh, system suddenly converts to something something different. So this was this was something that we tried across the enterprise, and it, this was made available at a at a uh, centrally. So we we had to we had to go to an extent where we say that okay, so some kind of a provisioning we we could do. So you you uh, you 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 will be given access to an image that you want to try your uh, hands on. So we we were able to do that and then solve that uh, infrastructure problem to a certain extent. We also had to give them some 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 broad guidelines on how do you how do, how do you how do you how do you traverse this path and become a from from a user to how how to become a developer how to contribute to open source and things like that. So it was it wasn't like an academy so to say but then we had to say that okay now first two weeks you try your hands on this and then three weeks you do this so so a broad set of guidelines which which would help people graduate slowly and then uh, build their muscles on a on a skill of which they are not familiar with currently so uh, a year down the line we had around uh, we had we had two types of projects one are projects which somebody has tried their hands on and they are opening it up as a proof of concept or a sample project which people could uh, other others can try their hands on so we we call it uh, assignments or training projects so we had around 100 150 training projects which were actually which which uh, individuals coming in to learn a technology could uh, start start using them we had 70 solutions that were uh, getting built across the enterprise and being built in a community model so this this was something very different because we we are used to having people in a, in a tied up in a center of excellence so that that's what we call people who build solutions so there'll be a center of excellence where there are three people who are trying to work on a solution now we were able to work on getting around 70 of those projects out into the public so that anybody who's interested could start collaborating and that is that was one big thing for uh, a developer who's not doing such i mean who who doesn't get access to those solutions so they it, it was a privilege for them to start working for a solution so that way we were able to get a lot of projects and then we were uh, for each of those solutions we, we used to conduct different uh, types of meetups we, we used to go the traditional open source uh, community way we used to have uh, meetups where we will introduce the technology to them then we'll give them okay there is a solution that we are trying to build and then we'll have code sprints where we would uh, invite them and then we will have a uh, may, maybe a day where we say that okay now we, we are going to attack this problem solve this and go on so we, we used to have things like that and the uh, we, we i mean it, it was a pretty successful thing at the end of it we thought oh yes we, we are there we are done and that's when we realized okay now the in the intention that we started with we we actually wanted to become a we we wanted to create open source developers contributors and then what we were again creating is a traditional solution builders and people like that so it, it required the next next change that we had to go through came there so we had to we we had the same platform we had the same environment but then we we changed our approach we 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 were evangelizing all the time from that we actually moved on to a gamified approach where we said okay now you are in this technology you're trying to learn something different you're going to get i mean the the perks are different you will get more points if you are in xyz in java you learn openstack you get more points than you you've been always in infrastructure and you start learning openstack so we we tried getting people into into newer technologies and also we got them into uh, participating in external communities and then having inviting communities to have meetups within our campuses so our developers get to see how actually a community works and what makes them what makes them stick to the community and contribute and it is also about uh, 
it 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 is it is easy to i mean how how, how do you make them uh, cross hurdles each hurdle so when you have a community meetup in our uh, premise it was easy for us to tell them okay no can you explain how this how how, how this community what is the ways of this community so it it made it uh, easier for us to take that uh, approach we also had uh, uh, around 100 people who had started contributing to different open source projects across the spectrum. We have around uh, 20 who have contributed to OpenStack from our company now. So it is around Manila, Neutron and so some of the products we have uh, started contributing. So it is, it was about uh, getting these communities come to our uh, premises and then uh, hand holding them that helped us and then we had some of these contributors in turn mentoring the next. So as we are saying, we have around 100 people who are contributing to open source. That is a long way from the 10,000 that we are intending to go, but then it is not that we want all those 10,000 to start contributing, but then they should be in a position to de deliver solutions using open source uh, technologies. So this is the current uh, statistics, so to say, if you uh, in my organization, so we have around uh, 10, 10 different uh, open source products that we are uh, focusing on and then we have uh, do the, the numbers around them shows the number of people who are actually contributing something within our organization. So they not necessarily outside but then they are they are either in different step of in different uh, stages of uh, learning and uh, uh, becoming uh, becoming developers in those uh, particular products. And in the last uh, six months, we have also launched three open source projects. So this is this this is something which uh, we, which was like uh, it it is it is our internal solutions. So we want to bring it to the open and then see how how the community is reacting to it. One is these are in in the area of open source. So we want to tell our customers also that uh, yes, so. What whatever solutions we are uh, building, we are actually open sourcing them. And uh, so one one is in the big data area, and uh, the other uh, the third one is a infrastructure monitoring uh, system. And the second one is a, is actually a, it, it's intended for uh, developers. So if you want to try your hands on open source technologies, maybe this is the place you start with. So this is something which we are uh, using to get a lot of developers into our uh, organization. So as we stand today, what has happened in our organization is this model, the success that it has bring in, brought in, we are actually trying to do the same way of community based uh, talent development in other technologies as well. So we have opened it for even an SAP or a Microsoft and things like that and then trying to create those communities within our, uh, within our enterprise and then having collaborative uh, development in those technologies also. So that's, that's, the, that's the current uh, stage in which we are in. So uh, if, if you have to uh, see, see the evolution of this uh, journey, so we, we started as a company which was like very, very siloed. We had a traditional way of uh, approaching learning. From there we had to come to a community based uh, approach where it is like a potluck. So whatever you have, you bring it to the table and then you see how, how it is of uh, use to the others. And then from there we had a, we had a transformation where we are uh, making, making people into uh, contributors. So that is pretty much what I had to cover if there are any questions. So you said uh, there are around 100 contributors. So yeah. what percentage of the time is dedicated to contributing to open source? That's my first question. And the second question I have is uh, from a Wipro business point of view, what is a business justification for people to contribute to open source? Okay, these contributions happen voluntarily. So it is not that uh, we are giving them a percentage of time where they can actually contribute. So most of it, I mean, it, it, it could be that uh, may, I would say maybe a, a day in a week 
is what is what is going in. Yeah, twenty percent. But then it is. It's. I mean, they they are not. I mean, uh, I assume you're from a similar background, so you you kind of understand. So it's not that they are not uh, in a billable role. They have to work that forty hours, whatever is required for the customers. But then this comes as uh, uh, the 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 perks of contributing to open source is is something different. So we 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 reward them differently for the contributions that they are making. So that's that gamified approach that I was talking about. So in the community, they get a different stature, they get reward points accumulated. So that that's how the contribution works. And the second question I had was uh, business justification. So uh, I understand the 80-20 uh, uh, ratio that you have for contributing to open source. But let's say when you have 10,000 developers, right, which your goal is. So when you say in the organization that, hey, we want to have 10,000 developers contribute to open source, what do the execs say, right? What is the business justification? Why should Vipro as a business contribute to open source? Yeah. So, see, open source as a, I mean, it's a different play altogether, right? It's not like a, when when we, we, we wanted to be called the trusted advisors for our customers. So when we go and say an open source technology, we propose that as the best to a customer, customer would definitely is going to ask, okay, how do you know? How do you know this is the best? So it makes sense for us to say that, yes, we have 100 developers who are working on that. We know in and out of it, and we vouch for this. So it's like a guarantee that we are giving. So where we say that, yes, our, our, our developers are putting time and effort into it, and then we know this is the best. So that's kind of why we are in this game. So the way we are putting it is from a, from a developer, it is they, they, they are getting the advantage of getting into I mean, uh, the, the traditional development and the, that kind of a developer is, is dying. You will have to get onto a place where you can actually learn new things pretty fast and then start, uh, start developing it yourself, if not at least understand what somebody else is doing and contribute to it. So from a developer perspective, yes, that's the path we ask them to take. And from a business perspective, it makes sense for us to have those people contribute to this uh, technology. So it gives us some mileage in front of customers. Yeah, I had a question. So you guys were targeting a number of different open source communities. Um, was there one specifically that you found developers were having a, a large trouble breaking into or contributing to? And uh, also, how did maybe OpenStack compare to the other yeah. open source communities? OpenStack was a tough one. We had, <laughs> we did have a lot of uh, trouble getting into it. But then uh, the community was very supportive. We had a number of meetups uh, which were held within our campus where uh, people were uh, taken through steps. And the processes were, uh, I would say, from an OpenStack perspective, processes are pretty neatly laid out. So that made it easier. But then the technology per se was, was complicated. Uh, do, you, do you guys have people from like ops backgrounds going into Definitely. wanting to get into development? Yes. What, what's the criteria for that? Do people just? have to send an email to somebody or do they have to take a test or what? Yeah, so <laughs> so it, it, it is, see, a, a lot of our people are actually in the ops background. They know how to deploy, they know how to do it, but then they, they wouldn't know how to get onto it. So that's where we were trying to see if the individual has a passion of learning something. So th there are no prerequisites. So you come in with what you have and then you say, okay, now there are all these things you need to learn to get to the next level. So the, the, tech, the technologies are available, the self-learning paths are available, you come start taking it, nobody is tracking you whether, oh, did you really say that you're gonna do it, did you do it, so that, that's not happening. So once you've come to a stage where you can actually start contributing to an internal solution, that's when you'll start recognized as a developer. So, and then it, then, 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 then it, it depends on you, whether you wanna stay with ops or you wanna move to dev. Or I was wondering uh, how your gamified approach has worked for you guys, because we kind of ran into an issue where people almost became intimidated by the fact that, you know, like we were essentially ranking them in a way, um, when in reality we were just trying to kind of get them to jump into the community. So I was wondering what kind of experience you had with that. Yeah, we actually don't rank them. So we, we had a leaderboard <laughs> initially, <laughs> then we, 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 we didn't pursue with that leaderboard approach because it just didn't make sense. So it was... 
Yeah, so so it was about uh, okay. Uh, so how many points are you getting? So we just uh, there were different levels. So we call them starters, movers, flyers, and things like that. So you say that okay, in this technology you are at this level, and then uh, in another technology you may be at a at a different level altogether. But then if you have like a, a plethora of technologies where from where you are gathering points, you you consider different. I mean because you you are you are a polyglot or whatever. So. So it it was only about that person and how that person has been the previous day to the current day. So we never tried comparing them with uh, another. Um, hi, um, I have a question because inner source is defined as bringing open source policies into the company, and then you are also detailing how developers are participating in specific open source projects. So my question is, how are you measuring how successful is this idea of inner source, inner source within the company? So are you having metrics like mentorship or, I mean, you, you should probably have something like silos of developers and you want to break open this, there. right? Yeah, so, yeah. so, so that, that's the number of solutions that I was talking about. So t typically, uh, units would have their own developers who are actually doing these solutions. So the number of solutions that we were able to bring to the open, so that is that that's our metric, and we have a metric for every quarter. How do you improve these numbers, and the number of units that you are uh, attracting to this to this model? So that that's what we track. So the number of solutions that are uh, run in the inner sourcing uh, model. I am. <clears throat> I'm interested. In, I, mean, I understand that you're a consulting company, right? So yeah, so it would be clear you know, why why people would be self motivated, you know, to develop the new skills and improve their careers and so forth. Um, one of the thing I'm one one of the things I'm wondering is how did you assess their skill levels? Because I'm sure you would in turn be looking to place them with customers and things, and you know, and determining what rates you should charge and so forth. I mean, how do you assess? How do you assess you know people's progress and competency and and so forth? Yeah. So that that's a difficult thing because uh, the traditional way of assessment is all around uh, taking a test and seeing whether you you've scored in the test or not. We didn't want to go that way, so we have actually taken the points that they get from the community contribution from the inner sourcing contributions. The same points that we use for the gamification, the same points are what determines what a person is. So that's what we are using. It doesn't necessarily translate to our billing rates or anything, but then that, that just tells how good the person is in the technology. So it, it, it could be due to, I mean, he, he contributed to a wiki or he added a blog, he, he answered a question or he did a bug fix. It, it could be anything, but then, yeah, he, he gathered so many points, just says that uh, he's good in that. So if there are no questions, thank you.